Welcome back to Fox News tonight. The Biden administration announced the latest weapons transfer to Ukraine on Friday. The $800 million package includes cluster bombs, a weapon banned by more than 120 countries under the Geneva Convention. Well, last February, then White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki argued that the use of cluster munitions by Russians could constitute a war crime. Now President Biden, well, he thinks otherwise. It took me a while to be convinced to do it. But the main thing is they either have the weapon to stop the Russians now from their, keep them from stopping the Ukrainian offensive through these areas, or uh, they don't. And I think they needed them. Well, I support the Ukrainian cause, but these weapons are designed to inflict maximum civilian casualties. It doesn't matter who uses cluster bombs. In my opinion, they are always morally wrong. Well, Vivek Ramaswamy is a Republican presidential candidate. And Jordan, now, Vivek, great to see you. It's good to see you, Pierce. I've been interviewing you quite steadily since you announced that you were running for president. And it's been very interesting to watch your progress. The numbers have been inching up, inching up. You've been getting on the road, Iowa, New Hampshire. You've been getting around, putting your name up, doing lots of media. And your star has been rising. How do you think the campaign's going? I think it's going really well. Frankly, we're a little bit ahead of where we expect it to be sitting in July of 2023. But I think we're in the early stages. This is still the preseason of the campaign. I think the regular season begins when the debate stage starts in August 23rd. So I'm looking forward to that. One of the things I'm focused on in this campaign, Pierce, is let's define the agenda. Who are we? What do we stand for? And why do we stand for it? I think this is the phase of the campaign where we're leading the way on that. I think for a long time, our movement, we've been running from something as conservatives. I'm in this race to start leading us to something, to our vision of what it means to be an American. I'm here in Iowa. That message seems to be resonating really well. And so we're grateful for the early start we've had on this campaign. OK, let's take that up on you then, because when uh, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine uh, in February last year, you were right on the front foot. You tweeted that very day that when someone like Putin is said to bully, the only way to stop a bully is to punch him in the nose. But your rhetoric about Ukraine has changed quite markedly since then. You now don't think America should be helping Ukraine punch the bully in the nose. Why not? I think Ukraine should punch its own bully in the nose. That has always been my position, is that Ukraine is perfectly fine to pursue a Ukraine first agenda. I think at this point, though, the U.S. has more than fulfilled its obligations under the Budapest Memorandum of 1994. But right now, we need to focus on how we advance American interests. Here's my vision of how we should end this war, Pierce, is I would negotiate a peace treaty which would freeze the current lines of control exactly where they are, a Korean War-style armistice agreement. I would further commit that NATO would not admit Ukraine to NATO, but I would demand something of even greater value from Putin. Russia has to exit its military partnership with China. The China-Russia military partnership is the single greatest military threat that the United States faces. So I would end this war on terms that require dissolving the Russia-China partnership. Okay, but hang on. Let me, and that, all right, by let me, the way, is how we deter Xi Jinping. Okay, but let me jump in. When you say you, you, you divide the lines up as they are today, you mean just giving vast swathes of Ukraine to Putin, a dictator who's marched into a sovereign democratic country. You would just give him all that land he's taken by his murderous rampage, killing innocent women and children, for example, bombing maternity hospitals. Why would you, as a man who wants to be president of the United States, the absolute beacon of freedom and democracy, why would you give a dictator vast chunks of a land he's invaded? Because I recognize what the real threats are to the United States. The top threat to the U.S. is China and particularly its military alliance with Russia. So I see an opportunity here to use this as a chance to end a war. Is this because I trust Putin? No, I do not. But I trust him to follow his self-interest. And so I don't think it's the United States' job to be the moral police in the world. If so, we'd be having a conversation about Libya, about the Congo, about much of Africa, many other nations that also have great human rights atrocities that are awful. But the United States' job, first and foremost, is to protect American interests. And the way I would do it would be I would require, I wouldn't just give that to Putin. There are requirements for that deal. He has to pull the nuclear weapons out of Kaliningrad, which borders Poland. He has to pull the Russian military out of the Western Hemisphere, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua. 
And yes, he has to, most importantly, exit that military treaty with China. Okay. That will put us in a stronger position as the U.S. And there's one more point, Piers, that's really important. That's how we deter Xi Jinping from going after Taiwan. Well, I'm not because so sure. Right yeah, okay, Xi I would say, bad. I, I yep. get it. I'm not sure what a deterrent it is to, uh, to President Xi if, he, if you just give him... Uh, Putin, a vast array of land <laughs> belongs to Ukraine. If you're President Xi, oh, like, oh, I, oh, I see. So America just lets people go into countries and help themselves. And we're going to give, we're going to give him, going to give President Xi half of Taiwan while you're at it. That's the conventional wisdom, certainly appears, and I understand the view. However, the reality is that Xi Jinping's calculus is that the United States won't want to go to war with two allied nuclear superpowers, Russia and China, at the same time. Mm -hmm. But if Russia is no longer in China's camp, Xi Jinping no longer has a strong enough hand to go after Taiwan. Okay. So, yes, that is how we deter Xi Jinping from going after Taiwan he... while avoiding war with China, okay. which is what I'll deliver. Let me put president. this to you very quickly. You, to make this move, yeah. you'd have to be president. To become president, you've got to win the Republican yes. nomination. To do that, you've got to knock out Donald Trump, who is the King Kong of the Republican Party right now. You've been flirting on that fence of being really careful not to annoy the beast. Uh, you've kept well away from criticizing overtly the gorilla. At what point are you going to take your gloves off and start swinging? Well, Piers, the way I'm running this race is a little bit different. As I said, I'm leading us to run to something, to our vision of what it means to be an American. I'm done with retrospective grievance. And so you're right. There are other Republican candidates who may have grievances against other candidates like Trump and are in this race to air those grievances. I'm not. I'm in this race to actually lead this nation to a better place than we're in today. I am also ahead of where Trump was, mind you, in June and July of 2015. That's where I am in this race. Okay. And so that's a big part of we're on the rise. I'm confident we're going to win, and I'm confident we're going to lead this country to a revival. Vivek, I love your energy. I love your dynamism. I love your positivity. I love everything about your campaign, actually. But at some point, you're going to have to start swinging at Donald Trump. And that's when this gets really interesting. But for now, thank you very much indeed. Well, the progressive left is erasing women and ironically some of the most ardent so-called feminists like you.